So um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, my name is Bruce Landry. I'm program officer with the Member Relations Division at CICAN. I'm very grateful to be joining you from the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe Nation and Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Um, as we begin, I wanted to remind everyone that this session is being recorded. So a recording of this session along with the presentation will be shared with all uh, registered participants afterwards and our gracious speakers have agreed to um, to do a little bit of editing of the of the presentation as well to add in any information that might come up after today. And so um, speaking of, so today we have the pleasure of hearing from Darlene O'Neill, who's the Director of Employment and Student Entrepreneurial Services at Fanshawe College. And we also have um, Daryl Cathcart, who's a consultant with Release Point Education. They're going to be speaking to us on the topic of um, military connected campus, the recognition and inclusion of an underrepresented student population. So um, at CICAN, we do strongly believe that this is a great opportunity for all of our members to um, recognize and include a group that hasn't been formally explored in many years and to learn from one another. So we welcome you to ask your questions in the chat. Um, at the end, will there'll be a chance to, to raise your hand and, and ask your questions to the group as well. And um, we welcome an open discussion. So without further ado, I pass this along to you, um, Daryl and Darlene. Bruce, thank you for that uh, kind introduction and this wonderful opportunity to, to share some thoughts on this, uh, this underrepresented student population. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Canada, military connected learners are, are really an underrepresented group of students in higher education where there has been limited research to date. Study of military connected students match the mass demobilization periods of the 20th century where this landscape has been dormant since the end of the Korean War recent military operations in the 21st century and the introduction of a federally sponsored education and training benefit has really reinvigorated interest in this subject area where Fanshawe College has recognized uh, this opportunity and is contributing to unlocking the potential of this group of learners. Darlene. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, and thank you, Bruce, for the kind introduction. Uh, as uh, Daryl talked about, we're going to share a little bit about Fanshawe's experience as a military connected college. And just to give you a bit of background about myself, yes, I am the uh, Director of Employment and Student Entrepreneurial Services at the college. However, I am also the project lead at the college, um, working in concert with Daryl uh, to a to start and launch and continue our military connected college initiative for 21 years before um, coming to Fanshawe. I was a civil servant with the Department of National Defense and I'm also the proud daughter of a Naval veteran and the proud daughter or sister of an Air Force veteran. So thank you, I'm excited to share this with you today. So as Darlene mentioned, and as Bruce introduced, my name is Daryl Cathcart. Uh, I spent 26 years in the Canadian Army in the regular force. We're going to talk about that in, in a little bit. Uh, where I released a, a couple of years ago uh, and started a doctorate uh, of education at, um, where I started to look into the role of training and education and the positive influences and benefits uh, post-secondary education can have on military to civilian transition. So that led into, uh, into uh, starting my consultancy, Release Point Education, and a wonderful partnership with Fanshawe College. So without further ado, this is what we're going to uh, talk about today, with clearly the emphasis being on, on, on Fanshawe and, and the wonderful experience uh, to date. So a couple of slides. I, I want to frame the issue for, for those who are unfamiliar with military connected students. Um, given the lack of, of Canadian research. This is a def these are two definitions that I've created um, just to kind of frame um, our collective understanding. Um, military connected students are, are those uh, individuals with a tangible connection to the Canadian Armed Forces. I've subdivided them into uh, six different uh, categories. Those current serving regular force, those full-time members of the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, members of the reserve component, primarily part-time, not always, but primarily part-time members of uh, uh, serving members of the reserve component. Uh, clearly there are veterans, those are honorably released members of the Canadian Armed Forces. We also include um, uh, the civ civilian members of the de uh, Department of National Defense, as well as uh, immediate family members of, of serving CAF members uh, or veterans. 
Additionally, um, we look at foreign military veterans. So this definition has really been influenced in two ways. One is, is an altruistic uh, way, you know, in supporting those, those members who served. Uh, you know, it's our pleasure to, to now serve them. Also, there's an economic backbone to, to this definition as well, um, because each one of these subcategories uh, can uh, be a sponsored student and bring significant amount of funds to the post-secondary journey. When I, when I talk about military connected campus, uh, it's really that synchronization and alignment of, of resources in order to produce that desired effect, in order to set the conditions for a positive learning environment. So those two definitions, uh, those two um, uh, were, uh, definitions I'll be referring to throughout. So, you know, military con connected students, um, you know, some may ask why, why is this group underrepresented? Why are we like, looking at, at this group in such a, a fine manner? To support this investigation, I, I want to speak about what makes uh, military connected students underrepresented and different from traditional uh, college uh, or university students. Given the lack of Canadian specific research and data, uh, we often look to the United States um, and, and some Australian studies um, where reoccurring themes emerge in the differences between military connected students and a traditional uh, student in post-secondary. Now, you know, a common start state is to look at the lived experience of, of military connected students where, you know, that, that disciplined and structured nature of military service dissipates upon enrollment in post-secondary education. As educators, um, as we become more aware of, of military connected students, um, we're better positioned to, to support this group um, through various uh, tailored policies uh, specific in intake sessions, prior learning assessments, advanced standing, and the like. Not only that, as we start to, to look and, and unpack what a military connected student is, we can see that the lived experience within that group is, is somewhat different. Meaning, you know, if there are two uh, members of the Canadian Armed Forces, one who serves in the Royal Canadian Navy and one who serves in the Canadian Army, um, although they have the same rank and may have been in, for this, uh, in the military for the same amount of time, the, the, the likelihood is that they'll have two completely different lived experiences. I'm not going to go through each one of these, but another element I want to talk about is that adaptive value. Um, military connected students bring a great deal of, of, of ad, uh, adaptive value to the learning environment. From contributing to in-class uh, discussions or participating in student governments, a different perspective is shared. This adaptive value may extend to influence on the program, the faculty, and the learning environment. Finally, um, what I'd like to mention at this point is military connected uh, students are, you know, are a very heterogeneous group. They, they come from all uh, backgrounds, all races, cultures, ethnicities, and truly represent Canadian society. Um, I just want to provide a brief snapshot for, for some of those who, who may not be familiar with, um, I'll be talking about the education and training veteran, uh, benefit, a veterans affairs benefit. Uh, but just over the years, there, there were a number of, uh, of benefits offered to uh, Canadian Armed, Armed Forces veterans. So really th this timeline and these benefits match um, you know, periods of heightened activity, uh, whether they be in the First World War, the Second World War, and Korea. Um, so after Korea, education and training benefits uh, ceased for all members of the, all releasing members of the Canadian Armed Forces. While it was an enduring mission of Veterans Affairs Canada to take care of ill and injured members, those people who, who served 10, 15, 20 years or more would release from the Canadian Armed Forces up until 2017 without an opportunity to have uh, access to sponsored uh, training and, and education. In 2017, started, announced in 17 and started in 2018, um, the Veterans Affairs Canada announced the education and training benefit, which really signified a, a key investment in the national uh, veteran transition strategy. The desired outcome of sponsored education is to provide veterans with a renewed sense of purpose, autonomy, and increased employment competitiveness upon return to the civilian workforce. So let's just talk about the ETB for, for a, a brief uh, moment. So this is for uh, Canadian Armed Forces veterans. 
for veterans uh, for, on less forced to retire uh, as a result of a medical issue where rehabilitation uh, and education funding was provided, there, there was no other uh, form of assistance to access post-secondary education. The ETB provides two ranges of support. One, for those who served six or more years, those uh, uh, veterans may be able to access up to $42,000. And for those uh, veterans who served 12 or more years, can access up to $84,000, uh, a significant uh, amount of money. Additionally, uh, out of that, uh, veterans can take $5,000 for what are called short courses. So if we think of uh, workshops, personal development, boot camps, uh, things of that nature, that's what a short course is. So this is a, a very robust benefit that's available to all Canadian Armed Forces veterans at this point in time. So if we look at some stats over the last couple of years, th th this is only two years worth. Uh, we can see that, you know, nearly 7,100 applicants have applied for this benefit um, with nearly 5,400 being enrolled in some type of, of recognized uh, programming. So clearly there's a desire uh, by veterans to, to use this benefit and to, uh, to get some uh, post-secondary education before heading back into the civilian market. So I want to talk about some, some ongoing initiatives and, and some of you on the call, I, I'd love to hear from you at the end. Um, I, clearly, I don't have a monopoly on, on what's going on uh, across the country. But however, I'm, I'm confidently suggesting that a shift is occurring. Um, this positive shift is manifesting in, in different forms um, from looking at just one element of the population, veterans, to looking at all military connected students and how they can be included uh, on campus. So from different bursaries and scholarships um, to online offerings and memorandums of understanding to even colleges and universities forming working groups and exploratory committees. Fanshawe has taken uh, you know, a very bold and deliberate approach in a cross-campus implementation um, where it's a full academic and so, uh, social support model in order to, uh, to uh, assist um, military connected students in cultivating that positive learning environment. So if we distill this just, just a little bit and, and we start to you know, think about the military connected population uh, geographically, uh, I only have a couple of, uh, of uh, regions here, here on the slide. We know that 60% of the regular force, those are the full-time uh, serving members of the, of the military, um, are junior non-commissioned members who most likely do not have a college diploma or university degree. Furthermore, Veterans Affairs Canada identified that 34% of military occupations are not transferable to civilian uh, employment, meaning there is a, a significant likelihood um, that retiring Canadian Armed Forces members will enter post-secondary education to be more uh, competitive in the civilian market. So as I look at you know, three, uh, three major cities across Canada, Halifax, Ottawa, and Edmonton, we can see that just knowing the, the, um, the current serving uh, military population and Veterans Affairs has, has keeps uh, fairly good track of, of the number of veterans in the area, um, we have a, a, a rather robust uh, population pool uh, that we can attract to post-secondary education. Looking at um, Southwestern Ontario, you know, we knew that the, the, uh, we were not located next to a, a large uh, regular force base, a lot of primary reservists. Um, so that forms the, the basis of a population, as well as nearly 1,300 veterans in the area. That still is a significant potential in order to, uh, to welcome military connected students on campus. Darlene? So I'm really excited to uh, talk about the Fanshawe experience. In the fall of 2019, uh, Daryl presented to the senior leadership at the college and uh, introduced the idea of a military connected campus. Uh, my boss, uh, who's Michelle Boudouin, the vice president of student services, asked me if I would uh, champion this uh, military connected college initiative and I was very excited to do so. Uh, so I partnered up with Daryl and uh, we started on our path. Um, a couple of things that we really needed to do was to do an environmental scan, first of all, to figure out, do we have anybody in our college that's military connected? And so we did that. And 
through that scan, we were able to find a few members of our um, faculty and administration that were military connected and uh, some other important key players in our um, in our college. And we developed a, a steering committee because we figured uh, that we needed some guidance and institutional buy in to um, launch what we are calling our military connected campus. Next uh, slide, please. We built a timeline and I'm not gonna speak to everything on this timeline, but I will speak to some of the initiatives. Uh, through the help of Daryl and Daryl's leadership, we uh, presented Military 101 uh, to faculty, staff and administrators across the college so that we could introduce uh, our college family to um, all the different concepts that Daryl just introduced, plus a few more around what military really uh, means. It's not, uh, as I like to say, it's not, um, you know, veterans are not all 80 years old and uh, military members are not all white men. Um, so we did deliver Military 101 to start to enculturate the themes across the college. We also were very, very, very proud to launch a couple of days before Remembrance Day, and uh, we declared our college as a military-connected college. Um, at that Remembrance Day launch, uh, we had uh, members of the Canadian Forces, we had members of Veterans Affairs, we had... Um, local partners and uh, we also partnered with Terry Kelly who some of you might know from the song A Pittance of Time and we officially declared ourselves a military connected college. We also um, engaged in a uh, an environmental scan across our student body and we wanted to know okay if we're going to be a military connected college who are our students that we're going to support through this initiative? And Daryl's gonna to speak to a little bit about the um, results of that, that survey. Daryl? So during last summer, um, we, we really started to, obviously COVID uh, you know, was a little bit of an impact in, in, in conducting that environmental scan. We, we built our survey to try and define, uh, to define that uh, population. Um, COVID also provided us the time to, uh, to solidify the foundation internally um, through a number of those workshops um, uh, that Darlene spoke of, preparations, and we also conducted a number of external uh, activities. When, when the, um, this academic year began, we surveyed the students and 124 self-identified. You know, interestingly to, to us, uh, every single um, aspect of that, those subcategories uh, were part of um, part of the military connected student definition uh, uh, showed up within the college. We know today there are more um, than 124 and, and uh, we look forward to, to gaining more uh, information on that. You know, as I said earlier, Southwestern Ontario, uh, primarily reservists, primarily army reservists, so it was no surprise when uh, those who identified which environment they belonged to, uh, belonged to, to the Canadian Army, uh, followed by the Royal Canadian Navy and the Royal Canadian Air Force. Another thing that came out of this survey was um, we had both officer and non-commissioned officer representation. Um, you know, that's important because traditionally, not always, but most likely officers have um, a, an undergrad and perhaps a master's, uh, but in this survey we had identified that seven uh, officers um, enrolled at Fanshawe College, College to do some training. Um, of those who identified gender, uh, 40 uh, did so as, as women and 82 as, uh, as men. As, again, as we lo looked at this, uh, at this survey, um, each faculty at the college was represented and military connected students were enrolled in 69 different programs. This was just outstanding because it broke a lot of our myths about military connected students, you know, entering a certain type of programs. Um, so that was really, really um, good, uh, good to see. And finally, um, just over 50% of the military connected students uh, had served as, uh, between zero and, and six years in the Canadian Armed Forces. So this tells us, although a little bit of a younger uh, population, um, they still had a, a significant amount of uh, military service, you know, which includes 
uh, deployments both domestically and uh, in uh, and overseas. So part of the timeline, we're just giving you a snapshot of uh, of this last uh, this last year, um, and like like Darlene on on her slide, and I'm not going to go through every one, um, but you know we felt it important to to review the policies. Um, Fanshawe College, uh, like like most institutions across Canada, has very robust and inclusive policies. But we viewed those policies through a military connected lens to ensure that uh, we were truly being inclusive and we could truly support um, military connected students regardless of their affiliation. Um, so that that was important to us. You know, this all happened during COVID. Uh, social support is uh, you know is an essential element that. That has been noted uh, from our allies down south. Um, you know, given the different lived experience and the and the um, and the different characteristics of, of military connected students, so we launched a speaker series, and, and Darlene will talk about that a little bit more in depth. But that allowed uh, military connected students to to coalesce around a theme and uh, and be able to to interact. Another thing that that uh, that we did was to include programs that already existed. So Fanshawe College uh, had a wonderful program under, uh, under the lead of, of a, a key faculty member called Maple Scholar, and it looks at advanced standing. So how how uh, does and how did Fanshawe College, you know, look at that military experience, training, and education, and bring that in for the benefit of both the institution and that military connected student? So that's uh, that Maple Scholar program uh, is simply wonderful, and it's something that we're carrying forward. Uh, across the institution to do that synchronization I spoke of early, earlier uh, in that definition. To support the uh, academic programming and uh, challenges that students, uh, military connected students could potentially face, we're very, very proud of our um, academic promise of support. When we presented uh, the concept of an academic promise of support to our senior leadership team, our senior academic leadership team, uh, we received 100% consensus on this uh, support. And this support uh, navigates the space between the school policies and the realities of being a military connected student. There's often times when they're called out for operational or, or uh, sorry, domestic duties or um, international duties, or you could be a veteran that has a standing military, or a standing medical appointment. And we want it to create realities where the students were not conflicted to meet their academic requirements. And uh, so we're very proud of this promise. We have a, a student that is in the human resources program. She's a reservist and she shared this testimonial with us. And this speaks to the power of the academic promise and um, the support that our academics in the college are providing for our students. It's a win-win situation. This individual, this young woman, Emma, she was able to go on her career course for her um, her military, as well as complete her program. And it went very, very smoothly. She received 100% support from the academic uh, faculty that she's uh, aligned with. So, you know, as we continue to look at uh, the different uh, academic pillars that uh, and academic themes uh, that we started to develop, uh, micro-credential was a natural fit. Um, not only was it a, a, a natural fit, um, you know, the, the Canadian Armed Forces has over 3,000 uh, different uh, uh, courses and training evolutions. Um, and how do we bring those skill sets and transfer them into, uh, into civilian employment? One of the things we identified was that ability to communicate uh, a little bit differently. And uh, so the college went out and got a former uh, senior leader, um, you know, a great mentor and teacher to help put this together. And, uh, and this will be delivered in the, uh, in the fall uh, of 2021. So, so it will start off uh, with, with four modules and really focus on those communication skills in order to help you know, bridge from that, that military world into, uh, into civilian employment, uh, again, uh, to help in increase that employment competitiveness.
to share uh, the support that we have in our academic faculties and leadership across the college. I'd like to introduce you to Gary Lima, who's our Senior Vice President Academics. Hi, my name is Gary Lima, and I'm the Senior Vice President Academic here at Fanshawe College. Here at Fanshawe, we are extremely proud to develop a military-connected campus. As the Senior Vice President Academic at the college, it was important to me that we incorporated military-connected students into our culture through the recognition of their unique backgrounds. To provide academic support for our military-connected students, we laid the foundation with the development of an academic promise of support. This promise is an overt declaration of how Fanshawe College will mitigate military-related barriers to post-secondary learning. By acknowledging some competing priorities between military service and learning, the academic promise of support was designed to ensure no institutional disadvantage is encountered as a result of service or its effects. In addition, we are developing tailored micro-credentials, which will better enable the transition of military skills, unique abilities, and experience into recognized learning outcomes. The creation of these micro-credentials will be added value for military-connected learners and will lead to a positive impact on their existing qualifications and future employability. We recognize that members and veterans of Canada's armed forces are highly trained and possess a wide variety of existing skills when they enroll in post-secondary education. This realization has prompted the expansion of an existing initiative. Project Maple Scholar, is a pathway agreement that acknowledges the levels of military professional development where those who have completed the requisite stage of military training will be considered as having met the requirements normally associated with the prior diploma or work experience necessary for admission into several of Fanshawe's graduate certificate programs. Finally, our goal is to see military connected learners graduate and re-enter the civilian workforce armed with the skills they need to be successful. Part of our approach is to recognize their accomplish accomplishments and encourage those still serving members to proudly wear their uniforms at graduation ceremonies and veterans to wear their medals. All students will receive a specially designed coin, a military tradition of appreciating a job well done upon graduation. The cultivation of a military connected college at Fanshawe is an exciting project that aligns with our values and personally fills me with pride. It allows us to acknowledge the past experience of those who serve our country while providing them with an exemplary education experience. Thank you for letting me share about Fanshawe's military connected campus. So another uh, initiative that uh, we're extremely uh, proud of is Fanshawe College is the first college in Canada to partner with Helmets to Hard Hats. Helmets to Hard Hats is a, is a nonprofit that was established in, uh, in 2012 um, that looks at um, helping uh, veterans, reservists, um, and their families, uh, their spouses and dependent children to the age of 25 uh, and senior cadets uh, into pathways um, to, for apprenticeships all across the country. Most recently, uh, Fanshawe College, Helma Starhart Hats and, and myself, uh, we were awarded uh, some funding to explore um, a military connected students in trades pilot program uh, where we're developing tailored pathways that lead from military service to training and education and two apprenticeships. So we're, we're very proud of this, uh, of this partnership with uh, Helmets to Hard Hats. So we've talked a lot about the uh, academic side of our military connected college. And now I'm gonna to speak to you a bit about the, um, the services side and the supports that we provide uh, in partnership with our academics 
uh, we do we did initiate a speaker series and pride seems to be the uh, the word that Daryl and I use a lot uh, and Gary has used in his uh, presentation as well and we're very proud of the speaker series as well uh, the speaker series was was designed in cooperation with our student club that I'll talk to you about in a minute uh, the speaker series was a tailored engagement opportunity to uh, invite our students, but as well as our faculty and staff and administrators to hear some philosophies about military connectedness, to hear from some live speakers, lived experiences. And we've hosted two so far, one around leadership philosophy uh, that our president, Peter Devlin, um, was our guest speaker, was very well attended as well. Our second one was focused on equity, diversity, and inclusiveness. And it gave an opportunity for students to network as well. And that was one, this is one thing that we do not record. We do not record them because the students often share some personal experiences through the um, question and answer and conversation that takes place during their speaker series. Peer engagement, as I said, uh, is very, very important. And you know, when you when you're in a military, when you're a military connected person and you're still in service or you're working for national defense uh, or you're a family member, it's a very collectivist type society that you're involved in. And when you transition into post-secondary, it becomes an individualistic culture where um, you know, you're focused on your individual uh, goals and, and um, academic uh, priorities. So we wanted to make sure that the, the transition was um, more of an embracing student life experience and that military connected people could find people like them. We have a volunteer student ambassador. Her name is Maxine. She's a, um, a past reservist as well as a veteran uh, from the full-time Canadian Forces. And she's also a Veterans Affairs fully sponsored uh, ETB student. Uh, Dean is the voice of our students and she sits on our advising committee as well. Um, she's an advocate and she also has partnered with our Fanshawe Student Union and has gathered enough students to create a fully funded student club. The monthly supports that we have at our college, uh, being the Director of Employment Services, obviously we have a dedicated military career consultant, and uh, that individual provides uh, peers, or sorry, individual professional support for transitioning uh, students, whether they're coming in or whether they're leaving and looking for postgraduate employment. Uh, she helps them articulate their skills uh, and their transferable skills from their military experiences right through to postgrad employment. We've, um, we've partnered with all of our community resources that provide uh, dedicated supports to military connected people. And our counselors are very connected to those supports now. So our counselors are very well advised. And Daryl has trained all of our student advisors, our academic advisors, as well as our um, pathway advisors on military connectedness and what the different um, career paths look like while you're in the military and how to advise them and transition them into post-secondary. And uh, I would be remiss if I did not share with you some comments from our Vice President of Student Services, which again highlights the holistic supports that we're providing at Fanshawe, Services, or Fanshawe College. Vice President of Student Services, Michelle Baldwin. Hi, I'm Michelle Baldwin of Fanshawe College's Vice President of Student Services. As someone raised in a military family, I see the creation of a military-connected college as essential to reduce the real and perceived barriers to post-secondary education. I saw my father retire at 52, a Korean veteran who served for 32 years in the Canadian Army, where there were very few transition supports for someone who still had 15 years of contribution to make. The Military Connected College is a collaborative approach that unlocks the potential of students at any age or stage by coupling formal academic programming with student services. From our students and across each faculty to senior leadership, we have a shared understanding of the importance of the Military Connected College. Military Connected students represent the diversity of Canada, and we know the importance of recognizing and incorporating the student voice in the development of the Military Connected College. 
We have encouraged student participation and communication through surveys, focus groups, and email, along with nominating a Military Connected Student Ambassador. The Student Ambassador is a voice for other Military Connected students and also a member of our Military Connected Advisory Committee. The challenges of post-secondary education and learning have been amplified for sure during the pandemic. To support greater social engagement in cooperation with our newly formed Military Connected Student Club, we launched a speaker series where invited guests contribute to the conversation on learning, leadership, and future. We've also enhanced our career and counseling services to, to set the conditions for learning and student success. Advisors and counselors are continuously learning and increasing their expertise to support Military Connected students. One of the many partnerships Fanshawe Colleges has established is with the 4th Canadian Division and the realization of a civil military leadership pilot initiative. This is an opportunity for current serving reservists to participate in a tailored program that recognizes military training and leadership, along with student life and co-curricular activities. Upon completion of the program, a leadership recognition is presented at graduation. Our focus on military connected students at Fanshawe represents an explicit acknowledgement of their dual commitment in service to Canada and their individual pursuit of academic success. My father would have been proud of Fanshawe's approach and certainly would have benefited if this support had been available to him when he transitioned to civilian life. So we've, we've talked about the military connected student. In, we presented the institutional um, support from both the academic and, and student services uh, approach. And the other part of this trinity of stakeholders is, is the community. This is a student centric approach. And it's very important that we uh, have uh, partners and, uh, and, and both have partners and raise a com community awareness at not only the local level, but the regional level and the national level. So Darlene and I have had conversation with the headquarters of affairs, the headquarters of the Canadian Armed Forces Transition Group. That's a new specialty unit which helps uh, Canadian Armed Forces service members transition. But we've also had conversations and, uh, and built relationships at the local level. So that strengthens our approach in, in terms of, uh, of collaboration and raising awareness of this uh, of the military connected students the two military symbols in the bottom of your screen the one green flag and the and the other um, the other one to the right of it that represents the fourth canadian division michelle just spoke of that of the wonderful memorandum of understanding that was signed uh, between the president of fanshawe and uh, and the fourth canadian division which which is at the regional level and if we look uh, to, to the other symbol there, that's the 31st uh, Canadian uh, Brigade Group, which is at the local level. So again, it just shows that, uh, that those ties that we're building, the awareness that, that, uh, that we're, in, uh, we're striving to, to achieve uh, on, this, on this community pillar. Additionally, we, we, we continue to partner with other elements um, uh, with other elements and other stakeholders. We've spoken about helmets to hard hats, um, but we also on the family side have just recently um, uh, formed a relationship with the, the local military family resource center, um, again, to provide that holistic support. We spoke of, uh, of Terry Kelly, you know, a, a Canadian treasure singer, songwriter, um, a member of the order of Canada, uh, motivational speaker. I could go on about Terry Kelly, but we've also have a partnership with him uh, and his Pittens of Time movement, um, as well as the, the Royal Canadian Legion. And those three military symbols at the bottom, they represent cadets. Um, the, the, uh, the cadet leagues of the, the Army, Air Force, and, and Navy, uh, and building partnerships, and, uh, and again, just um, gaining uh, greater stakeholders. I'm excited to talk about the way ahead at Fanshawe. I, I'm, this is probably the, the most important, um, meaningful project I've ever worked on. And our uh, vision at Fanshawe is to unlock the potential. And we continue to um, create an attraction strategy for our students. One of our values is also um, to focus on students. And I think that this 
this military connected campus shows that we're focusing on every student, uh, regardless of where you come from or who you are. So um, committing to our institutional values, um, building a strong attraction strategy for our military connected students. And I know that I do manage the military connected student mailbox and it's very busy. Uh, I answer a lot of questions from potential students. So that's a good sign. We continue to operationalize the, um, the project. And uh, if you'll recall, we started this in a pandemic in November, 2020, we launched. So we've been very busy. Uh, as we've uh, developed this initiative. But mainly, we also want to focus on students and we want to normalize the experience for our military connected students as they transition from their life connected to the military to their life connected to Fanshawe College and post secondary. Yeah. So, as we look ahead, there's an immediate occasion for colleges and universities to advocate build capacity and drive knowledge around military connected learners in Canada. Raising awareness of military connected students with CICAN and its members is a valuable opportunity to cultivate partnerships across institutions to support this underrepresented group of learners. We know that the military community writ large is very transitory and the fostering of partnerships may better support uh, interprovincial moves um, it uh, may better support family members or create unique program delivery models that reduce barriers to post-secondary education and contribute to a better learning environment. You know, it, if we look beyond our borders, there are many international students in all of our institutions who have a military connection and some of whom are financially sponsored. The continued exploration of military connected uh, campuses can be the impetus in developing new collaboration and provides the foundation upon which existing relationships uh, can be reframed. Given the 60 year gap of Canadian knowledge and the ubiquitous nature of military connected students, this subject area is ripe for collaboration. By understanding the regional and military service differences, customizable academic and tailored support models can be developed. From allied research, we know military connected learners face unique and complex challenges upon enrollment in post-secondary education. Working together, we can continue to a student-centric culture that normalizes the higher education experience uh, for this group of underserved learners. So in conclusion, military connected uh, student support in Canada is in its early days after decades of dormancy. In supporting military connected uh, students in higher education, we are contributing to a recapturing of an individual sense of purpose and enabling transition. Thank you for this opportunity. And we hope that this is a start of a, of a discussion surrounding a national level issue, which is really confronted at the regional and local level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darlene and uh, Daryl. Sorry, Darlene, were you gonna? No, okay, perfect. So um, at this point, we, we invite um, anyone who has any questions to go ahead and turn on your cameras or put them in the chat. I will um, pass this along to um, Caroline Gagnon, my director who was able to make it after uh, she had a meeting that finished just uh, just afternoon. And um, in case uh, she has any words to say, and, and then I think she had a question as well. Well, first of all, thank you so much for this excellent presentation, very comprehensive and uh, it's a great teamwork, not surprised. It's uh, the trademark of Fanshawe College, so kudo, excellent. Um, and my apologies, I couldn't, I, as Bruce said, I was kind of on the dot. So th thanks to Bruce who introduced uh, both of you, uh, Daryl, Darlene. Um, so I, I think I would invite, we, um, we have a, a good group and I don't know if it's only me, Bruce, but I could not add comments or questions that everyone could see in the chat. 
I could only send comments to you, Darlene or Daryl, in the chat. So because we're not such a large group, I would invite you to unmute yourself, put your camera on, and please join the conversation and ask questions to our great speakers. Uh, that's how I would invite you to do so if uh, I'm just looking at the screen and uh, oh, I see this. Anyone who wants to jump in, please. I just feel I, like we're in the family. Yes. I think Jamie has a question. Good to see you, Darlene. Uh, it's nice to see you too, Jamie. You too. And uh, Daryl, uh, thank you both for the presentation. Uh, I'm in Pembroke, Ontario, right next door to one of Canada's largest military bases in Petawawa. Uh, one of my questions is around prior learning assessment and recognition and how Fanshawe has managed that. Have you staffed, have you put specific resources into PLAR? Because that has always been a challenge for us around supporting the military community who want to make that transition and get credit for their previous work experience. So it's really a a human resources question is, is where I'm going with this. Do you want me to take the first stab at this answer, Daryl? Okay. Um, with regards to PAR and uh, prior recognition, as I said earlier, we do have some members on our team that are familiar with MPRRs and how to read them, uh, how to interpret them. And so that particular associate dean um, reviews them and then reaches out to the other uh, associate deans, if it's not his uh, school, reaches out and talks to them about um, the advanced standing, what the MPRR means, interprets it, and uh, they, they come to the decision, actually the associate dean comes to the decision uh, themselves regarding uh, the entry. It's for their so no, no special resources, just the graciousness of our, um, our volunteer associate dean that has the military background that can read MPRRs. Jamie, I'd just pile on to that. Um, just, just two quick things. As part of our survey, um, you know, we, we asked that question. We asked military connected students, did you, did you put in for a Pilar or, 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 or the like? Um, one of 124 did. So there's an awareness issue and trying to encourage. So I encourage you with your students at Algonquin to, to really uh, get folks to, to leverage their prior military experience. Secondly, there are a number of uh, national assets that, that may be able to, to help you as well um, if you don't have somebody at the college uh, specifically to, to look at that. So uh, that's something I would in, encourage you um, to look at. And, uh, I appreciate your responses, Daryl. I absolutely agree around awareness. That's one of the issues, but the back end of that is when you create more awareness, you have to have the capacity to deal with the applications. So thank you both for that. I'll let others ask questions. Any other questions? Now the chat uh, is open to everyone uh, if you want to add anything or please jump in if you have any questions, put your camera on, unmute. Anna, do you have one? I see that you have unmute yourself. I think I'm unmuted now, but um, yes, yeah, you are. Just thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm in a, a quite a small institution in Alberta, and uh, while we don't have tons of military participation or uh, involved students, um, I'm just kind of looking at what would be like the high level recommendations of program implementation that we could do if we don't necessarily have staffing resource or a high volume of these students. What would kind of be like the baseline? most beneficial supports we can offer these students um, moving forward, just because, yeah, like we're, our numbers aren't huge. So prioritizing resource will be a challenge, but um, you know, obviously we want to do the best that we can with both. I'll let Daryl make his recommendation first and then I'll, I'll follow on. So that's a, that's a wonderful question. And I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Um, you know, I I've developed it and it was the focus of my doctorate. Um, was, was a military connected campus framework. And the whole idea behind that is that it's scalable and tailorable. It can be adjusted for universities, uh, you know, large universities in Canada or small organizations. So really it's working in collaboration to find out what's important to the institution. Is it academics? You know, Jamie asked a great question about PILAR. 
So, you know, are you um, seeing students who are trying to really leverage that military experience? Well, that may bump up on your priority list. So as we do that needs assessment, you know, with big, medium or, or small institutions, um, you know, it, it's determining what is important to, to, that, to that institution. So, you know, it's a non-answer, but, but the framework that, that I offer is, is it's suitable for everybody. And that's kind of why I, I looked at those, those military connected student populations, you know, which range from, from really large on the East Coast Coast and to somewhat smaller in Edmonton. I appreciate yours is probably smaller, um, but there is, I, you know, most likely some domestic military connected student uh, participation as well as international. Darlene? Um, so I, I, I was going to add that, uh, you know, speaking what Daryl said, what, what's the priority for your institution, number one, from the leadership perspective? And then, you know, scanning your students and finding out who are the students and what are their needs. And then looking at the capacity that you have in your college, what expertise do you have? What, um, what people have to lend some support to maybe your student union to starting a club for these students? Any um, simple, small steps also make a huge impact. I will also add that uh, we're using all the resources that we have at the college. We have not hired a single person at Fanshawe College to support the Military Connected College. Thank you, Hannah. Is this, you have the answers you were looking for? Yes, good. Uh, we, you also, we also have a question from Rebecca Sabourin. Sabourin? Rebecca, do you want to put your camera on and on mute? Yes, yes you're there. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Carolyn. And you pronounced my last name correctly. So uh, kudos to you. I just want to say I'm Associate Dean at Georgian College, and I just recently got hired two years now. I've been at uh, Georgian College, but in the Air Force uh, for 27. So a veteran of the Air Force uh, for 27 years. I know that we're right beside Borden, which is one of our biggest training bases in Canada. And I did have some students come to me and ask me to lead the veteran club as an administrator. And it's been an absolutely great experience for me as I've struggled to navigate um, veterans affairs and, and just um, assessing services that are available. So the team has really been, the veterans club for me has been wonderful just to learn from other people's experiences. For instance, it takes about two years to get resolution on pension disabilities. And it's just nice to be able to talk to other people going through the same processes and learn from them. So I just really want to thank Fanshawe for sharing what you're doing to support veterans because there is a lot of turmoil right now. I'm sure you're all aware of what's going on in the news. Um, the class action lawsuit is underway. So I think it's very important to allow the students and faculty to have a, a group that they can talk to. Uh, I think from my perspective, getting out of the military is very overwhelming. And um, there is a second career assistance network seminar that we all receive, SCAN, but there's just so much information thrown at you. So having the students su success is wonderful. And I have noticed that there is bias towards military people and what we bring. So it's, I think that micro-credential maybe is really wonderful just to show the training that military people get and also where they might need assistance to integrate into, you know, private business. For instance, my mom had to explain to me the other day what a normal working day looks like in a civilian agency because in the way you just typically go. So I realize I've taken a lot. I think this is just phenomenal what you're doing and will really help the vets that go to Fanshawe and any other colleges. If there's anything I can do to help, uh, I would love to participate. So thank you for sharing. And thank you for your service. Thank you. You know, there, Rebecca, you want, yeah, yeah you, you bring up a, just a wonderful point, um, you know, and it's about Fanshawe. Fanshawe has really taken this, this on board. 
And, um, you know, I showed a couple of slides about community partnerships and, and engaging those other stakeholders. You know, having a student centric approach is paramount. You know, the military will always be there. Veterans Affairs will always be there. Those personalities will change. But those students, if we know what we can use from within the institution uh, and, and how to best support them, we can better adapt to those changing uh, external, um, the, the changing external environment of the military, of Veterans Affairs. You know, if the military goes from an in-person scan to an online scan, uh, all of those different things. So Fanshawe has really done that uh, exceptionally and, uh, and, those, and by enabling those, those um, external partnerships. So you, bring, you raise a really good point. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And I, I, I will uh, echo what Darlene said. Thanks for your service. So uh, I would like anyone else, don't be shy. If you don't want to put your face on the screen, I don't know if your background is not correct or whatever reason, you can also just unmute yourself, raise your hand or just, uh, uh, I see the clock is ticking and it's already 12.57, but we do have time for one more question or comments, anyone? I'm going around the screen to make sure I'm not forgetting anyone. I see though that we are, you have your superb president of Franchise College who is also with us. So I don't know if Peter, you want to add anything to that before I uh, do, before the closing. I just want to invite you, sir. Um, Caroline, bonjour, merci. Bonjour, Peter. Vraiment gentil. Um, so all I can say is that um, as I put in the chat, I'm super proud of Fanshawe. Um, Darlene and Daryl and team, many of many of who are on this presentation, um, and it just demonstrates the really special level of commitment that there is across the Fanshawe community to military connected students. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, I'm proud proud to be Fanshawe. Thanks for a great presentation. And um, for all the other institutions out there, um, there's a real willingness to be able to share the things that we have learned. So, um, Caroline, merci. Uh, uh, um, thanks for the opportunity. Well, thanks, Peter. I just uh, want to say that we are very proud and very pleased. We were pleased when um, Daryl and Darlene and when Fancha College, I. I forgot, I, I know at the beginning it was Denise Amio with uh, my colleague Marquita who kind of uh, were approached. And we we do believe that what Fanshawe is doing, first, it is so excellent to take care of our veterans, uh, but it's also so well aligned with the mandate of our colleges across the country. And we believe that this model and this concept that you've been so successful at Fansha to implement and to carry on that can be exported across the country and outside and to other colleges. So that's basically the main purpose and the reason why we said, yes, we can support and we would be pleased to share that model with the rest of Canada. The, the session has been recorded. So we'll be able with the link to promote it and share it with other colleges who could not attend. Uh, I would say that people at this time of the year have been perhaps a bit more tired of attending more webinars, but after fact, if they can, if they want, so we'll be pleased to share the information. I think what I gathered and the messages that I gathered, I really like when Michelle mentioned that it goes well with the diversity of Canada, but I would go beyond that. I think this model can help us and help colleges continue to build a more sustainable, inclusive and resilient Canada and our veterans can certainly, certainly contribute a great deal to that. And uh, it's certainly a way and it's a, an underrepresented group of students that all colleges can tap on, can outreach, do the outreach. Thanks Fansha for showing uh, this model and for being open and ready to Sir, help mentor and accompany other colleges who would like to um, follow your step. Uh, Daryl and Darlene and the whole team at, at Fansha, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. And we will share this information and you might be busy after that receiving phone calls or emails. I hope it's okay with you. 
Busy is my second name, Carolyn. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for my colleague, Bruce, who also uh, helped with uh, uh, holding this and hosting this, this webinar. On, uh, and from everyone, as we say, since the beginning of a pandemic, stay well and stay healthy. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. And darling and Darren.